Hey, welcome everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to share with you how I generated 43 inbound sales leads in less than five minutes. So that's what the hook is today. That's the topic. That's the training. That's what, what I'm going to go over. I'm going to show you. It's kind of a case study. I'm actually going to show you step-by-step step exactly what I did. Okay. So you could use this for almost any business, but in particular, this works really well for freight brokers, freight agents. Um, it works really well, well for my coaching and training business. So for those of you that don't know me and are just joining for the first time, my name is Dennis Brown. Been an entrepreneur for over 25 years, but very, very blessed. Built four multi million dollar companies in four different industries now. And again, been very, very blessed. Started a freight brokerage back in 2003, went on to do over 200 million dollars as a freight broker, sold that company. And now I own, uh, I've, I've been the owner and been training since 2009. I'm the owner of freightbrokerbootcamp.com, which is the most cost effective and comprehensive online freight broker, freight agent training program. Trained over 10,000 students. And if you guys want to check that out at freightbrokerbootcamp.com, we do offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. So check that out. But today, we're going to talk about, again, how to generate inbound sales leads, right? So that's what we're going to do. we got a bunch of people getting live, so thank you for joining me. Um, for those of you who don't know, while we let everybody get live here, hit me up in the comments with the city and state you're logging in from. I'll try to do some shout-outs. Let's see who we got here today. We've got... Uh, Carlton from Maryland. We got Connor from Armenia, as always. We've got uh, ba -ba 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 Gloria for her, her first live. Welcome. We got Michael 46 from Orlando. Joe Almighty from Fort Lauderdale. We got Zorin from Macedonia. We've got Kevin from Shreveport, Louisiana. Timothy McNeil from Detroit, Michigan. Next links from Valley Stream, New York. Mohammed from Toronto. Welcome, everybody. Aaron uh, Elke Decker from... Olive Branch, Mississippi. Sergey, welcome. Mike123 from Chicago, Illinois. Corey Buckham, Buckin, Buckin, Buchin, Buckin, sorry, Billings, Montana. One of the places on my bucket list, as I shared with you guys before. Ken Anderson from North Carolina. Musa from uh, Oklahoma. Joseph Coleman from Jacksonville, Florida. Kelly from Columbus, Georgia. Tyler from Greensboro, North Carolina. Michael from uh, Tamaklo, Virginia. Robert from Fort St. Fisher. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Again, for those of you that are joining me a little bit late, here's the agenda. We're going to do the training up front, and I'm going to share with you how I generated 43 inbound sales leads in less than five minutes, okay, with less than five minutes worth of effort. And then... Um, we're going to do, probably do a giveaway. Maybe we'll do a Freightpreneur t-shirt, someone who solves problems you don't know you have and ways you can't understand. And then we're going to do live Q&A. So that's the agenda, okay? So let's let a few more people get live and then we'll get the show on the road. And uh, yes, I'm back with my Kill Cliff um, smoke. What is it? The Joe something? The Joe, I forgot what it's called. I don't know, but it's awesome. I love it. Oh, Flame and Joe. It's like a spicy, slightly spicy pineapple energy drink. It's awesome. No artificial sugar. So I don't drink coffee, by the way. So it drives my wife crazy. I don't drink coffee. My father-in-law, I've been with my wife for 27 years, dating and married. And literally almost every single time I see my father-in-law to this day, he still asks me how I want my coffee and I've never drank coffee. So it's just kind of a running joke, but yeah, so I don't drink coffee. I have the occasional one, one energy drink per day probably is kind of my max, but anyway, that's a different topic. So we got a bunch of people getting live. That's awesome. And yes, this is live today is Monday. July 31st and my time in East coast is 1204. So yeah, it is live. You can catch this on replay again. If it's after, I'll probably wrap this up around one o'clock. If you're catching it anytime after that, it's replay. As a matter of fact, if you are catching it on replay, hit me up in the comments with hashtag replay. Okay. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, cool. So 
I got a little bit of an outline I'm going to go through today, but I'm actually going to share the actual steps with you. So we're going to dive into that. It's going to be more of kind of a case study today, right? That's what we're going to talk about. So let me make sure we're prepared here and then we'll get the show on the road. All right. Sweet. Oh, I got to make sure I got my do not disturb on here because this thing will go crazy. My computer will go crazy during this live. All right, cool. So here we go. Today, I'm going to share with you how I was able to generate 43 inbound sales leads in less than five minutes. And I'm going to share with you the blueprint, the framework, the step-by-step -step process and how you can do that for your freight broker or freight agency business. So let's dive in really quick. All right. So for those of you that know me, know that I'm a big LinkedIn fan. Okay. So yes, I'm a big LinkedIn fan and LinkedIn has gener I've generated thousands of leads and well over $20 million in annual recurring revenue for my freight brokerage when I own that business. I joined LinkedIn in 2007, uh, sold that company in 2016. And during that time, we were able to leverage LinkedIn very heavily to grow our business, right? And so I'm a huge proponent of LinkedIn. And so today I'm going to share with you a strategy that I did used on LinkedIn that allowed me to generate recently, just in the last couple of months, allowed me to generate over 43 inbound sales leads and how you can do this for your business. So let's take a quick look here. Um, all right, so here we are, guys. So this is a post that I did two months ago. You can see here, I'm going to read the post to you, and then I'm going to pick it apart and explain to you. What I did was I went to my LinkedIn profile, and I, you're able to post content. And so what I did is I posted this. It was a little bit of a kind of a micro blog with an image. So let's walk through this. Here's the image that caught everybody's attention, right? It says my pitch, my prospect at 901 and me, right? So it's got an interesting image. And then I got a little bit of text here. It says this about sums it up for most freight brokers and freight agents here on LinkedIn. And then it says special free offer at the bottom. I remember the first shipping client I ever got using LinkedIn. It was in 2008 and I had no clue what the hell I was doing, but I learned quickly what worked and what didn't. We rapidly added uh, LinkedIn and social selling to our sales system. Since then, we've done business with hundreds of customers and generated well over $20 million from LinkedIn. Are you struggling to get shippers? Comment help and I'll send you a link to a free freight broker sales training library. No cost, no email opt-in, not gated, just reply with help below to get free access. So that is the post that I used to generate 43 inbound leads. And you can see here in the comments below, the first thing I said, I reinforced my call to action, which was comment with help to access the extensive library of freight broker sales training videos. And all I sent to them was my YouTube playlist of freight broker sales training videos. That's what I agreed to. I agreed to give them a free access to a bunch of free freight broker sales training. And then um, I also, at the time, we had open enrollment. I think we had open enrollment or we were about to open enrollment for my freight broker sales accelerator. And so I also said, Hey, if you want me to be your freight broker sales coach, show, show you how to get shippers in any market conditions up or down, get on the freight broker sales accelerator wait list and a link to the wait list. And I think from this, I think I added that day and the day after probably about 20 or more people to the wait list. They, they actually opted into the wait list, but this is where it gets a little bit crazy. If you look down, we're gonna, I'm going to scroll down through the comments and you guys will be able to see this. You're going to see that here's the first person. Here's another person that asked for help. Here's another person that asked for help. Another person who asked for help. All these people are asking for help, right? So they're actually saying the word help, right? And they're asking for help. These are leads. These are people that are interested in learning how to get shippers. They're interested in learning how to use LinkedIn, right? So I'm generating this for my business, right? Which is the training business. But I also did this for other businesses in the past when I've had consulting business, when I had my LinkedIn, when I had my brokerage. So any business can use this type of a framework to generate inbound leads for their business. Now, are you going to generate 43 leads every time you do a post? Probably not. But just imagine if you were able to generate two or three or four or five a week and it costs you nothing 
and they were inbound leads. So you can see here as I scroll down, help, help, help. Everybody's looking for help, right? And so then what I did was, I so we're going to take this example, right? And we're going to pull this up and we're going to make sure it's showing here. Okay, it's not. So I'm actually going to have to click on this and then we'll go back. So this is a person who actually, this is a dialogue. I'm going to open this up of someone who asked for help. Let me make sure it's showing on the screen. Yes, it is. Okay. So you can see here, this person asked for help and I sent the link. I said, here's the link to the free training and exactly what I offered her, I provided to her. And she said, thank you so much, Dennis. And I said, you're welcome. And then I said, hey, I'm curious, are you on my wait list for the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator Program? And she said, I'm not currently. What is it? So now she's asking me for additional help and additional information. I said, it's my five-week freight broker sales coaching program, blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. And I sent her the link to get on the list. And she said, I'll go sign up. Okay, great. So she got on the sale. So ultimately, what ended up happening was she ended up responding to that post, getting the free offer that I provided to her. And then she signed up onto the wait list for my freight broker sales accelerator. Now, I don't know if she actually purchased the program. I'm not sure if she did or she didn't, but I'm using this just as a case study to show you how I took a one-to-many approach, right? Which is this post. This is a one-to-many approach. And then I narrowed it down to a one-to-one -one approach, okay? Where I could have a dialogue with that person and we could start building rapport and I could provide value. And at that point, you know, good things can start happening, right? So this is an example of a post that I did on LinkedIn that I wanted to share with you. So again, I'm going to pick this apart a little bit. There's a couple of things that, um, that I did here that are really critical that you understand. Number one, you can see that you have to have some sort of a pa pattern interrupt, right? So I used this image as a pattern interrupt. When people are scrolling through the feed, I use this image to get their attention, right? This is kind of like that sales hook formula that I talk about in my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, right? Um, but ultimately, you have to have some sort of a pattern interrupt. You have to be a little bit different. So I use this image, right, as a way to interrupt the pattern. I assure you, this is probably the only time this image has ever been on here before, right? So it was an interesting, compelling, different image. And then I used kind of a, a, a storyline format, right? There's that old adage, facts tell, but stories sell, right? And so I used the, the story format. I told the story about how I got my first client and how it helped my business. And, and then I offered to share that, right? And then that's the, the other part of it is I made a really compelling offer, Here's the compelling offer. The compelling offer is this. Are you struggling? Great. If you are, just let me know you need some help and I'll send you a free link, right, to a freight broker sales training library where they could go in and full access and it says it's no cost, no email opt-in and not gated. So I made it very, very easy for them. So those are some of the key things. Number one, I had a pattern interrupt. I had a hook, something to catch their attention. Number two, I used a story kind of format, a short story format. Number three, I made a really compelling and interesting offer. And number four, I made it very easy for them. Very easy for them. All they had to do is go down in the comments and type the word help. And you can see here, if you count through, I, I said 43, it's probably closer to 50. But the point is, is I think 43 plus people all opted in and asked for help um, around a specific topic, which is sales related, which is LinkedIn related, which is something that I'm very good at, something I teach, something I've done myself, something I've leveraged and something that could be very valuable to them. So that's an example of how you can use a LinkedIn post to generate inbound leads. Now, here's the thing, guys, not every post can be a lead generation post. What you have to understand is that you have to build a network of people that are in your target market, right? Because they have to be, you know, they have, you have to be putting your content out to people that are of interest, right? That are interested in what you have to say. And so ultimately, um, there's a couple of keys there, right? You got to build a network of people in your target market. Uh, and then you can't, and it's, you have to take the strategy of kind of this whole 
give, 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 ask, right? So if you're going to give a lot of value. You're going to provide a lot of content, whether you're posting something every day or a few times a week. And then eventually um, you can make an offer, something like I did here, this compelling offer, and you can generate inbound leads. You could do one of these a week. You could do one of these every couple of weeks, but ultimately just imagine your business. If you had shippers contacting you and asking you for help, just imagine the difference and the paradigm shift and the difference in the conversation, conversations that you could have. Now, I'm not telling you that this is going to 100% um, replace cold outreach. I'm not saying that at all. I think you should be doing both. I don't think it needs to be an either or. But this is a strategy that 100% will work for your business. It's worked for mine. It's worked for many of my other students. And it can work for you, whether you're in the freight brokerage industry or you're a carrier or you're an owner operator or you're in a totally different industry. The point is, is that if you can create, you know, a solid hook and get their attention and you can make a compelling offer and you can make it easy for them, you have the ability to generate inbound leads. And I don't think you'd be disappointed if you had three or four or five or even 10 people per week reaching out to you and asking you for help you know, with their freight logistics, transportation needs. Now you'd have to customize the post and the content and the offer to that target market, but that's just really not that hard, right? So this isn't the post. You can't copy my post and use that post, but you can use the framework. You can use the blueprint. You can use the kind of the whole uh, concept of what I did here and you could apply it to your business, apply it to your niche. So I hope that was helpful guys. Uh, again, um, this is something that's absolutely free. Anybody can learn to do, costs you nothing, and literally would take you less than five minutes to put a post like that together. So I hope that was valuable to you. If it was, hit me up in the comments and let me know. One to 10. One, Dennis, you know, this really is up my alley. I really don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. 10 is, this is perfect. Appreciate it. Give us more, give me more content, more training around this type of information. I really I uh, like the whole marketing side. I like the inbound side. I like the sales training side. Let me know. Give me some feedback there. I truly appreciate it. And listen, if you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, and you just haven't put all the pieces together and you're looking for some help, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. We've trained over 10,000 students, um, been in business over a decade, and we offer a 60-day, 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. And if you are curious about my freight broker sales accelerator program, that coaching program that I have. It's a five week program where I take that piece of my brain, I transplant it into your head and I teach you everything about my favorite freight broker sales strategies, tactics, tools, and my entire sales system that I used to do over $200 million a year or $200 million as a freight broker. You can get on the wait list at freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. That'll be up on the screen here at some point, or you can just go freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. Really appreciate you guys being here. Hope this was valuable to you. If you're not signed up and on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn, find me, just search Dennis Brown freight broker. You'll see me. Let's get connected. Um, and again, uh, LinkedIn is a great place to be. You got to be there if you're serious about your business. Hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll hopefully now, just so you guys know, Next week, I'm actually going to be traveling abroad. I'm going to be in Greece, okay, for a couple of weeks. So I may or may not be doing my lives uh, from Greece, right? I might be on the beach. I might be on the pool. I might be in Athens. I might be in Paros. I might be in Crete. I might be in any of the places that we're going to be going. I'm hoping to be able to do my lives from there. Um, so stay posted, stay tuned on social and on uh, and on your email, on the email list, if you're a part of my, my email list, because I will notify you, give you updates. Um, again, it'll be either next Monday, the following Monday. I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks. So appreciate you guys being here. Have an awesome week. Those of you that are sticking around for the live Q&A and the giveaway, hang tight. If you've got questions about this strategy, about other strategies, about other tactics, hang tight. And we will get into the Q&A. Do not type your questions in the box yet. Okay? Don't type your questions in the box yet because they're going to get lost in the feed. Wait till I say Q&A is starting because otherwise your, your question is going to get lost. And I feel bad when I scroll back through sometimes and I see these questions that were lost in the feed. 
I want to try to answer as many questions as I can, but there's just usually never enough time and things go so fast. So give me that feedback. One to 10. <laughs> One, hey, Dennis, this, this is not my alley. 10 is, I really enjoyed it. Um, and be honest, if it's anything less than a 10 or if it's a seven or eight or whatever, or if it's a four or a two, whatever, just be honest. Tell me why. Give me some constructive feedback. I'm always looking for feedback from you guys. I really, it's how I have built the program. It's the reason why the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator program even exists is because of your feedback. I had hundreds of people asking me, can you put together a Freight Broker Sales Coaching Program? Can you put together a Freight Broker Sales Training Program? Can we do this? Can we do this? And this is for years and years. And I just, I kind of tuned it out because I knew it was going to be a lot of work. Uh, and so eventually I got off my butt and I did it a couple of years ago. And we've had, I think we've had between five and 600 people, close to 600 people go through that program. And the feedback has been amazing. The average rating is a 9.2 out of 10. By far the best program I've ever put together. Um, I have an absolute blast going through that. We just finished the last cohort that enrolled in, uh, in, uh, what was it, March? Or no, June. They enrolled in June. Uh, we just finished the last five-week cohort. It was great. It had a great group of people. Spent five weeks with them. Um, and the feedback has been great. And I'm looking forward to seeing them go out and kill it in the next, you know, 12 to 18 months on their business. So uh, let's see. Feedback, feedback. Okay, cool. Anonymous, anonymous. Hey, listen, if it's a three, that's cool. Just tell me why. Tell me what I could have done better. Tell me why it's not good. Is it just, you know, give me some constructive feedback would be great. Okay, awesome. Well, I do appreciate everybody's feedback. So let's uh, let's do a t-shirt giveaway. We'll do a freight printer giveaway. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand, all right? So here's all you got to do. All you got to do. Now, uh, you got to be in the United States for this because I don't ship these overseas. I know that some of my international, you know, family and friends and, colleagues and, and, uh, you know, people that are a part of my community don't like that, but ultimately it, it just doesn't make sense to ship a t-shirt overseas. It's crazy. So here's all you got to do for a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. I'm going to give away one t-shirt to one winner. And here's all you got to do. It'll take you less than 60 seconds. Pull out your smartphone. If you're on Apple, pull up the Apple podcast app, whether you've ever used it before, it's free and it's on your phone. Pull up the Apple podcast app. It's a little purple logo. And then search Freight Broker Bootcamp. You'll find my podcast. It's a free podcast. And all you got to do is rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast and come back into the comments and let me know that you rated, reviewed, and subscribed on Apple. Or if it's, if for example, you're on Android, you might do it on Spotify or you might do it on Google Podcasts, right? There are all kinds of podcast apps out there. Go into your smartphone. And find the Freight Broker Bootcamp podcast. You can find it pretty much anywhere where, pod, where you listen to podcasts. And then come back in and let me know that you rate, reviewed, and subscribed on Apple or on Spotify. Don't come back in here and just say, I subscribe. Don't come back in here and say Spotify. Don't come back in here and say Apple. Say rate, reviewed, subscribed on Apple or whatever platform it is. It's, that's important to me is feedback. That's the reason why I do this. I want to know where you're subscribing, where you're listening. And it makes it easier to do the drawing because otherwise I don't know who's doing what. I don't know if they did, if they qualified or not. So that's all you got to do for a chance to win the Freightpreneur t-shirt. I've given hundreds of these away. And um, by the way, if you don't win uh, today, because there's only going to be one winner, let me share this with you. I actually, after tons of people saying, hey, where can I buy them? Where can I buy them? You can just go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag and you can buy a shirt, uh, buy the Freightpreneur t-shirt and get it shipped directly to you. It's very inexpensive. I think the shirt is under 20 bucks, right? So for a t-shirt, I mean, most t-shirts these days, you're going to pay 25, 30, 35, 40 bucks for a t-shirt. I know it's crazy, but yeah, it's under 20 bucks for a t-shirt. So you guys can check that out if you guys want to purchase one. Um, and they might even ship it international. You'd have to pay some shipping fees probably. But yeah, just go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. But in the meantime, what I want you to do is I want you to go to you go to the podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, Chad, that's not going to work. Done doesn't work. I need to know rate, reviewed, and subscribed. 
on and then whatever podcast uh, application you're using. Otherwise, I can't pick you because, again, done doesn't mean anything to me in the feed. What you don't see is that I have a feed coming in from everywhere I'm streaming, from Facebook. I got a feed from YouTube. I got a feed from LinkedIn, right? So I've got a feed coming in, comments coming in from all these different platforms. So you got to make sure that you type in the comments, rate, reviewed, subscribed on whatever platform, right? And this is an honor system. I can't verify before the giveaway that you actually did it or not. But afterwards, if I ask you to show proof, then you'd have to show proof and I wouldn't want to embarrass you <laughs> in front of the community. So yeah, it's an honor system. It'll take you 60 seconds. Just go in, rate, review, and subscribe to the Freight Broker Bootcamp Podcast. And again, it's free. There are over 100 free audio trainings on there. The best of the best trainings that I've ever put together in the last decade, including some of these lives, including Q and A's, including webinars, including coaching sessions, private coaching sessions. So yeah, there's a lot of great information on there. Uh, and again, it's absolutely free. It's one of my favorite ways to listen to content. Um, you can do it when you're on the treadmill, when you're driving, when you're walking the dogs, whatever. Um, but it's very, very cool. Appreciate it. I do it a lot in the car. So if you're a truck driver, right, this is perfect for you. Podcasts have got to be perfect, right? So if you're a truck driver, this would be absolutely perfect because you're behind the wheel. You know, you probably put a hundred thousand miles a year on your vehicle or more. And, um, so you got a lot of windshield time. So, all right. So we got a couple people, um, Gloria, I did it. Doesn't work. You got to let them know, rate, review, and subscribe. There's only a couple of people that have done it so far. We got 60 seconds. I'm going to do the giveaway. So as of right now, I think you're about one out of two or one out of three chance to win the shirt. So rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast. And then we will jump into the Q and A. Hold tight if you have questions, because I will do the Q and A afterwards. Okay. And you guys can answer, ask any questions that you want. I will do my absolute best to try to answer those questions in the time allotted. All right. So as we wait here, okay, so we got a couple more. Uh, we leave Wednesday for Greece and I'm excited. Believe it or not, I've never traveled to Europe. I'm 53 years old, never traveled to Europe. I mean, I've done some international travel to Mexico and Canada and the place, you know, close to the U S but never traveled abroad to Europe. Really excited about it. And, um, taking my family and as well as we're going with another family, close, close family friends. So there's eight of us going and, uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy getting prepped for it with the packing and buying stuff and, you know, to-do lists and checklists and everything you got to do, but it's, it's a high quality problem because we are going to, we're going for 15 days. So, so yeah, it is going to be a lot of fun and you will probably hear from me. Uh, abroad from Greece. So don't be surprised if I'm somehow streaming on my phone <laughs> to do some sort of a Q&A or share some some tidbits of information with you, or maybe just giving you an update from Greece as to what we got going on in Greece. So, all right, cool. So here we go, guys. I'm going to randomly pick one winner and you are going to be the winner of the Freypreneur t-shirt and then we'll get into Q&A, but hold tight on the questions. Do not type your questions in yet. And the winner is... The winner is Corey Buchin, Buchin, Buchin or Buchin, Buchin. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I apologize, Buchin or Buchin. Um, Corey, you won, all right? He's on LinkedIn, apparently. You won the Freightpreneur t-shirt. Here's all you got to do. Message me on LinkedIn and let me know your full name, address, um, your size, unisex sizing, small, medium, large, extra large, so on and so forth. And that you won the uh, podcast t-shirt giveaway. That's all you got to do. Full name, mailing address, size, and that you won the podcast t-shirt giveaway. We'll ship this out to you. You'll get it within a couple of weeks. And uh, congratulations to you, uh, Corey, for winning. Congratulations to everybody else for subscribing. I appreciate the rate reviews and subscribe. Um, the podcast has been amazing. Fortunately, we've been ranked by by Apple in the top 100 out of all entrepreneur podcasts, which is kind of crazy to me, but it's all because of you guys. So um, appreciate all the kind words and the feedback. 
got hundreds of positive reviews and um, there's a lot of great content there for you for free. So check that out uh, at uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Okay. It's Freight Breaker Bootcamp Podcast. All right, cool. So let's jump into Q&A. It's time. If you have questions about the training that I just did, or you have questions about freight broker startup or freight broker sales or rating or getting your authority or whatever it is, whatever is on your mind, whatever questions you have, maybe it's questions that, I, that you asked weeks in the past that I didn't get to for some reason, come back to me, ask those questions, and I will do my absolute best to try to you know, connect with you. All right. So, oh, and by the way, if you didn't win and you want the Freightpreneur t-shirt, someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand, go to freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. Okay. I set that up as a resource for you guys. I'm never going to make any money on this because people are just, you know, it's not like I'm going to sell a thousand or 2000 or 5,000 shirts a year. I put this together just as a resource for you guys. If you seriously want the Freightpreneur t-shirt, cause I, I couldn't just ship them to everybody for free. Right. I mean, I had, I've had a lot of people ask, Hey, can I have one? Can I have one? Where can I buy one? There it is guys. Freightburgerbootcamp.com forward slash swag. All right. And let's jump into the Q and a. All right, cool. So. Okay. So, uh, Sam Kit asks, I bought the bootcamp back in November, 2000. I tried to log in recently to get a refresher. Has my access expired? Sam, I'm not sure. Here's what we have. Bootcamp has two types of membership. One is a gold membership, which is probably what you purchased. It's $185 one-time cost, and it's good for one full year. You get one full year access, one full year support. It's a lot of time to go through the program. Okay? So you probably purchased the gold program. Now, we also have a platinum program, which is our lifetime program, where you get a bunch of extra bonuses, plus you get lifetime access and lifetime support. That's a one-time fee of $389. So... I don't know about you particularly, but here's what you can do. Send a message to support at freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Ask if your membership is expired. You know, ask if they can try to help and see if it's expired or if you can get access to the program. And they'll let you know. They'll definitely help you. I promise. The support team is on stat. You know, they're on call uh, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Fridays. We have dedicated support for all of our students and for uh, any technical issues or any questions people have. So yeah, do that. And um, if you didn't, if it is expired, my suggestion to you, re-enroll as a lifetime platinum member because you'll never have to enroll again. Okay. That's why we put that together. So hope that helps. Okay. Let me scroll down through the next question. Let's see. Okay. Question from Leonard. Can a freight broker in an agent use two different security by Charity Barnes. You lost me, bro. Can a freight broker in an agent? Yeah, please clarify, but I'm not quite sure what, what you're looking for there. Be specific. Okay, anonymous. Not. Is it normal for a shipper to ask for workers' compensation insurance? If you are talking to large, large shippers, right? You know, companies that are doing a half a billion, a billion dollars or more in sales, they're large shippers. Typically, those large shippers have lots of attorneys on retainer and on staff. And the larger shippers may ask you for workers' comp, uh, a workers' comp insurance. Okay. Now, if you have employees, you're going to need workers' comp anyway. Okay. So if you have any employees working for you, you're almost every state requires workers comp if you have employees working for you. So large companies may ask small to medium sized companies typically don't. Okay. Now you want to make sure that carriers have workers comp or that, um, you know, um, or that, um, and typically they do unless they're an owner operator. Right. So yeah, so large shippers may, small to medium shippers typically don't ask for that type of coverage. Okay, question from Shaka Robinson. What does my initial setup pack I send to shippers need to have in it? All right, so typically you're gonna have maybe a copy of your broker authority to show that you're, you actually are a broker with an active authority, right? You're probably going to have 
Um, a, you may have your shipper broker contract in there. It's not required, but you might have a shipper broker contract in there. You're probably going to have a credit app where they can fill out a credit app, like a one page credit application where they can fill that out. You might have, um, you know, as a part of the shipper agreement, you'll probably either have your accessorial charges built into that, or maybe you'll have a separate accessorial charge sheet in that. And then you may have a one page sales sheet at the beginning, which kind of talks about the services that you offer and kind of what differentiates you. So those are a few things that you would, um, oh, and you'll also include a copy of your W-9, right? So you'll have a W-9, um, which shows your taxpayer ID, right? Which just shows your EIN. They need, the shipper will need that before they start processing payments to you. So those are the main things that you would include in a shipper uh, shipper packet, a broker shipper packet. So, um, you can also go to my YouTube channel and search through my videos on shipper setup packet. And I do a walkthrough of that. Uh, I actually take a shipper, a shipper setup packet. That's a, a real life one that the brokers are using and you can go through that step by step, but yeah, that'll give you an example. So hope that helps. Good question. All right. Gloria asks, how much time do you need as a new freight broker to get shippers? They said they can't work with these since they have to mature 90 to 180 days. How much time do you need as a new authority to get shippers? You can get shippers day one. There's no, there's no requirement for your authority to be in business or to be active in order for you to get shippers. Now, some shippers are going to require you to be in business for, you know, large shippers, they're probably going to require you to be in business for at least one year. Uh, and large shippers, typically, that's probably what they're going to require. And I mean, large, I mean, I'm talking about US Steel and, you know, Coca-Cola and, you know, and Unilever and, you know, big, big, big shippers, right? Those are not the ones you want to be going after anyway. Small to medium sized shippers, some might require, you know, you to be in business six months. Others will not require you to be in business any amount of time. They won't have any specific requirement. What they're looking for is what can you do for me, right? What's the value that you can provide to me? Because I, listen, my broker authority was only active for a very short period of time and we got our first shippers. I have students who get their broker authority active and within their first weeks or, or months, they have shippers and positive cash flow. So it's not a one size fits all. Some companies have different policies. It sounds to me like you might've run into one that was looking for you to be in business at least 90 to 180 days. My suggestion is schedule a follow-up, schedule a reminder for you to reach out to them. And in the meantime, just keep selling, keep focusing, keep building your funnel, right? So I hope that helps. Okay, Sam, glad that answered the question. Good question, Leonard. Okay, so if the shipper or the customer put the wrong product on the truck, who is responsible and how do you handle that? Okay, well, I guess it depends upon where it is in transit, right? <laughs> uh, if it was a shipper error, then um, the shipper should take some responsibility for it. But here's what you have to understand too. If the driver checked the load and made sure that there was the right, you know, number one on the bill of lading that they get, it should match up with what's in the truck, the number of pallets, the number of cases, the number of pieces, right? So he should be able to, he should be checking to make sure that the bill of lading and what's in the shipment match up, right? So it's in my opinion, and this is my opinion, this is a shipper error and the shipper should take responsibility for that. So, um, you know, a lot of that depends upon where it is in transit. If you didn't find out until the delivery location, right. Until you went 1500 miles and now the truck's delivering and the receiver tells you this is the wrong product at that point, that's when it becomes challenging, right? If it's 50 miles down the road, it's a lot easier to solve. If it's 1500 miles down the road, then it's a lot harder to solve. Right? So at that case, if it's at the delivery location, you're going to notify the shipper and the shipper is going to tell you what to do with the product. And they're probably going to say, hey, bring it to a warehouse or bring it 
you know, they may ask you to bring it back. And if they do, then they have to compensate you for that because that was a shipper error in my opinion, right? They may debate that, but ultimately you have the product and they're probably going to want that product back. And they, or they may make a deal with the shipper, that, the receiver that you're at now to buy that product at a discount. But ultimately it's the shipper's responsibility to resolve that and to compensate whoever's involved. So I hope that helps. Okay, so Marie has a question. When you started out as a new company, meaning no experience or clients at all, would it benefit me to try and reach out to carriers in my town or reach out to carriers in general before I contact shippers? Okay, so as a new broker, you are going to decide what niche you are going to go after. One of the most important steps of launching a new brokerage is identifying what niche you are going to go after. You do not want to be a jack of all trades, master of none, right? You don't want to call on every different type of shipper, LTL and parcels and truckload and import and export and steel and, and, you know, ice cream. I mean, you, you don't want to do that. You want to pick a niche. And I have a training in my, on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, which is freightburgerbootcamp.com or no, it's, um, hold on, let me pull it up. Oh, geez. YouTube.com forward slash freight brokers. You can go in there. You just type in niche, freight broker niche, and it'll pull up a training. I'll walk you through how to establish your niche. If you're already a member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, it's included in the program. Um, and where was I? What was that question? I want to reach okay. So you're going to define your niche. And a part of that niche research that you're going to do, you're going to be reaching out to carriers. You're going to be looking on the load board and identifying, you know, the rates and the load to truck ratios. And you're going to be understanding, you're going to be doing research about that specific niche, right? So that you're educated about that niche. So as a part of that, you're going to do some due diligence. But what I'm not a big believer in is going out and trying to get set up with 50 or 100 carriers before you start moving freight. And here's why. Because the reality is... Um, those carriers may not even be available or have any viability for you with the loads that you're getting. Perfect example. My niche when I first got started was Northeast outbound van freight. So if it picked up in New York and PA, New Jersey, all the way up through Maine, that region, right? That Northeast region. And it went on a van or it went on a, uh, and it was going West or South. That was my niche. So if I had a carrier that was, you know, wanted loads out of Indiana and Ohio and Virginia and Georgia and Florida, it didn't do me any good. It, I didn't do them any good and they didn't do me any good. Why? Because I didn't have loads out of there, right? Or, you know, so, so what I tell you to do, find your niche, get educated about that niche. Yes, you can contact some carriers to try to learn a little bit about what they do. Those are typically going to be carriers off the load board. Maybe they'd have some sort of a lane history where they, where they're consistently posting their trucks in those lanes and within that niche, particularly. And then uh, whether that be flatbed or van or reefer or whatever it is. And so you're going to develop some relationship, but don't get caught up with going out and setting up hundreds of carriers thinking that those are going to be the carriers you're going to do business with. Because, you know, if I post a load from Boston to Chicago um, and I dealt with a carrier that only wanted to do business from Boston to LA, that carry doesn't do me any good. I hope you get the point, right? So I'll post that load. When you first get started as a broker, you're going to be posting a lot of loads and that's how you're going to get a lot of your carriers. But the cool thing is, is once I get a carrier that goes from Boston to Chicago and he delivers that load on time, I can then develop a relationship with him, understand more about how often he has his truck there and what he's trying to do. And then I can build a partnership. Anytime a Boston to Chicago load comes up, I can contact him without posting it give him first dibs. And if he's got a truck available, then I work with him or her. If he doesn't, then I might have to go to someone else or I might have to post the load boards, but that's how you build your stable of carriers that are specific to your niche. Okay. So hope that helps. I know that was a long answer, but I really wanted to kind of break it down for you. Uh, Malik asks, do you help dispatchers looking for brokers to work for Connect? Uh, I don't help dispatchers 
really do anything. Uh, I teach freight broker, teach people how to start a freight brokerage or a freight agency. Um, so if that's something of interest, then I can help. Outside of that, I don't really do anything with dispatch. I don't teach dispatch. I don't promote dispatch. If you're a dispatcher and you want to work with brokers, then get a list of brokers. Take the same approach, right? Whatever niche you are in, whatever your carrier base that you are contracted with as an independent dispatcher, whatever their needs are, you got to find brokers that can meet those needs. So if you're in the reefer, if these, if you got reefer trailers and that's your customer as a carrier, as a dispatcher, then you need to find brokers that have reefer freight and then just reach out to them, connect with them, build a relationship. You're still doing sales. It's just a lot easier because you're calling on a broker versus a shipper. So I hope that helps. Question from Anonymous Anonymous. Wouldn't it be a disservice to your customer if you try to work with his customer, I'm assuming? Um, I don't know where that came up, but no, I don't think so. I don't think that if you, so if I'm a broker and I'm working with shipper A and I'm helping him move freight to his customer, okay? And that becomes say shipper B. And then I start doing business with shipper B while I'm doing business with shipper A, no, because they're shipping different products. See, shipper A is probably supplying something to shipper B that they need to supply their product. They're not shipping back and forth. They're not competing. They're in, you know, a collaboration. So shipper A, we pick up at, deliver to shipper B. And then I start doing business with shipper B because he's shipping to shipper C and D and E, right? So that's what I call kind of the daisy chain effect. All of your pickup and drop locations will be potential leads for you as a freight broker because now you have a warm intro. Hey, I picked up your location recently. Hey, I've delivered into your location recently. And so you automatically have a warm call. It's not a cold call because you've already done business with them, even though you haven't necessarily spoke to that person, right? So I hope that helps. I mean, I, I don't know if that's exactly what you were looking for, but it sounded like it. Okay. How many cold calls do you recommend per day minimum? Okay, so a lot of this depends upon your experience, skill, and stage you are in business. But here's the reality. As a freight broker, as a freight agent, you are going to have to fill your sales funnel. You're going to have to put a bunch of leads in and prospects at the top. And at the bottom, it gets a lot more narrow. Imagine a funnel and then one or two or three or four or five shipper shipping customers will fall out. So you do have to fill your funnel and that requires consistent effort. Um, some people are able to make a hundred to 200 calls per day at a pretty high level. Okay. If you're able to do it at a very high level where you're doing gathering sales intelligence, like I teach, if you have a unique and compelling sales hook, if you're able to do proper follow-up, then maybe that'll work for you. But for most people, what I have found, what I have found is that there should be a hybrid in a, of quality versus quantity, but you can't do all quantity and give up quality. It has to be a balance. So what I say is that if you're serious about building a freight brokerage, okay, and you really want to build it up and you're a startup, you should minimally be doing 30 to 50 high quality cold outreaches a day, minimum. Now, if you can bring that up to 50 to 75 or 50 to 100, that would be great. But I have never found anybody who's able to do 150 or 200 calls a day without suffering on the quality side, right? The quality goes way down, okay? And so the problem is, is that you only get one chance to make a good first impression. And if you're taking the old generic freight broker sales approach of, hey, we've got trucks in your area on a regular basis. And I was wondering how you move your truckloads, right? And you want to sound like everybody else and you want to waste your time and you want to get treated like everybody else. Well, then you might be able to do a couple hundred calls a day. But me, if I take the approach that I teach in my freight broker sales accelerator, 
where I have a, where I get educated. I have a compelling sales hook and I understand how to get their attention. And I understand how to migrate that conversation with questions and differentiate myself. I could probably accomplish twice as much by making 30 to 50 calls a day. Right? So you have to blend and balance quantity over quantity. Now, here's the reality. You can't just make 10 quality calls a day. That's probably not going to work either because you're not going to fill your funnel. So I think the long answer short is I think minimally you should be doing 30 to 50 a day. Um, and somewhere between 50 and 100 is kind of optimal. Anything beyond that, I think your quality is going to suffer a lot. So I hope that helps. Uh, Lynn Davis, does the payment for a freight broker go to CA? I was trying to get this course and I know you're in Buffalo, New York, but what is CA? I have no idea what CA is. Um, if you're interested in getting freight broker bootcamp, all you got to do is go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Let me see. Just go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com and you can sign up in one minute and you'll get instant access to the training online. You don't need to wait for anything. You can get signed up as a gold member, platinum member. You get instant access to everything. As soon as you sign up, you'll get a receipt and a confirmation. And then you can go to your email. You'll get your login credentials and you can click the link, log in, and boom, you're in there. So I hope that helps. I don't know anything about what you're talking about as it relates to CA. I'm not sure what that is. Oh boy. I'm scrolling. Give me, I'm looking for questions. So let me just look for a good question. Okay. Shaka asks for claim issues as a, as a broker carrier, would I be able to combine my surety bond and my motor carrier insurance for payment if need be? Hmm. Uh, okay. Let me read that again. For claim issues as a broker carrier, would I be able to combine my surety bond and my motor carrier insurance for payment if need be? Um, that would depend on if your motor carrier, uh, if your cargo and liability insurance for your or for your carrier side also offers a broker bond. In most cases they don't. So you probably wouldn't be able to combine that payment if that's what you're asking. Okay. Plus what I find and a lot of feedback from my students is they create a separate LLC for their brokerage and a separate LLC for their carrier businesses. And the reason being is that they don't want to commingle funds. And they also, um, it can, it ha I've had reports that it can cause issues. If you have your broker authority under the same LLC, it can cause issues with your carrier uh, cargo and liability insurance. So a lot of people set them up separately if this is, if you're ABC trucking, then this could be ABC logistics and trucking or whatever, you know, something very similar so that there's a lot of synergy there. Um, but yeah, that would be, that's my two cents. I hope that helps. If that wasn't the question, then restate and we'll try to get to it. Okay. Leonard asks, as a freight broker and an agent, can I use two different factoring companies under the same umbrella? Typically, no. In most cases, as a freight broker, as an agent, you're not going to have anything to do with factoring, okay? As, only as a freight broker. Freight agents don't need factoring. Freight brokers need factoring. So as a freight broker, you're typically only going to be able to have one factoring company. And the reason being is because most factoring companies are going to file what's called a UCC, right? Um, and that that's basically says that they have, uh, they have security over your assets based upon the money that's being exchanged. So it's a security measure. It's a financial security measure that most factoring companies will have. And it's just, it's just the way they do business. It's, they're, they're basically a bank. So if you went to a bank and you got a, a bank loan, they would have a UCC as well, okay? So um, yeah, in most cases you won't have two different factoring companies. You'll probably just have one that I'm aware of. I don't know. I don't know any brokers that I know that have two different factoring companies, but it could be possible, but I've never heard of it. Uh, 
Okay, question from Danielle. What scheduling would you suggest in email and calling as prospecting? What scheduling would you suggest in email and calling as prospect? Are you asking when you should send emails and phone calls? If you're asking that, um, Monday through Friday, normal business hours, right? Normal business hours are typically from eight to five, right? Uh, whatever time zone you're in or whatever time zone you're calling. So normal business hours, Monday through Friday, probably not a lot of activity on Saturdays. Although it, if you're having a hard time getting hold of a shipper, you might want to try a Saturday because they may be in the office and the phone won't be ringing. They may pick up. Um, but in most cases, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Normal business mm -hmm. hours is when you'll be calling or emailing for prospecting purposes. Now, um, what you have to understand is that early in the morning, a lot of times they're very busy. Shippers are very busy in the morning. Sometimes mid to late morning, you'll find that they'll, you know, they'll open up a little bit. Sometimes in, you know, the early afternoon, late afternoon, you know, you'll get a little bit of action. There is no perfect time to call or email. Um, the fact is, you know, if you're going to be making 50 plus cold calls a day, if you're going to be sending 50 emails a day, whatever you're choosing to do or however you're doing your follow-up, you know, you're gonna do them all day throughout the day. If you're a brand new broker, you should be spending 98% of your time prospecting. So that means from the time you get in the office from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., you need to be on the phone or you need to be on email or you need to be on LinkedIn, right? So I hope that helps. Okay, so how often and when should you follow up? How often to resend emails and leave messages? Okay, so as a part of my Freightbroker Sales Accelerator, okay, and this is probably a good, good time for me to let you guys get on the wait list here. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about, okay, so here, let me just do this first. All right, so the question she had, what scheduling would you, no, it's down here. How often and when would you follow up? How often to resend emails and leave messages? Okay, so here's the good thing. You're already on track. You're telling, you're asking me about follow-up. Follow-up is critical, right? So whether you're, I'm a big believer in having a multi-touch point outreach strategy that has a defined, what I call a sales cadence. And so it might go like this. This is just an example. I teach this in my Freightbroker Sales Accelerator. I teach the entire multi-channel outreach approach. I teach the sales cadence. I do all that, right? So day one, you might call the prospect in the AM and leave a voicemail. And then day one in the afternoon, you might follow up with an email. And then day three, you might follow up with a LinkedIn connection and then call in the PM and not leave a voicemail. And then day five or day four, you might send another email and then, you know, make an another phone call. And then day seven. And so it's a sales, what I call a sales cadence that uses a multi-touch point outreach strategy. And the reason why you do that is because you will literally double, triple, quadruple the number of conversations that you're having with a prospect because of two things. Number one, you're using a multi-touch point outreach strategy. You're using the phone and email and LinkedIn and maybe face-to-face -face or even direct mail. Those are the five primaries. Uh, and then you're also following up multiple times, right? So you're, you're allowing timing to fall in your favor, right? You know, so yeah, that multi-touch point follow-up strategy, multi-touch point outreach strategy, very, very powerful. Most freight brokers are not doing it. Um, you know, mo some will do a combination of email and calls, but they really don't have a defined sales cadence that they execute on every lead. Um, and it's having that system. What I tell everybody is this, you can go online and you can find a whole bunch of free sales training. Okay. You can get all kinds. There's all kinds of free sales training out there. And some of it's really, really good. Some of it really, really sucks. But here's what I know. Um, I've done over $200 million as a freight broker. Okay. I've built four multi-million dollar companies in four different industries. Now I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because I want to get your attention and I want you to listen. The fact is, I have a program called my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator Program. It's the best program I've ever put together. It's a coaching program where for five weeks, I teach you everything that I know about Freight Broker Sales strategies, tactics, tools, and you have an entire system. See, there's a difference between having a one-off 
sales script, which everybody thinks is going to work on everybody, which it doesn't, versus having a proven sales system. So that program is closed right now. You can't even enroll in the Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. It's sold out. I won't be opening it up for another probably one to two months, okay? But if you want to get on the wait list, all you got to do is go to FreightBrokerBootCamp.com forward slash wait list. It's free to get on the list. The training is not free. Matter of fact, the training is going to get continually more expensive over time. I can't tell you exactly what the price is going to be when I launch it. But if you get on the wait list, okay, I've had almost 600 people go through that program. If you get on that wait list, you're going to be the first person to get notified when I launch the program. You'll get all the details. You'll be able to make a decision if you want me to be your freight breaker sales coach or not. If you don't, that's cool. If you do, then you get enrolled and we work together for five weeks and I teach you the system. And I coach you on how to implement it in your business, right? So that you can see results. Because that's all that really matters, right? Is end results. Were you able to convert that knowledge into revenue? And that's my goal. So that's where we're at. Get on the, for, get on the wait list. And I promise you, it sells out every time. It's going to sell out again when I open it up. Um, you know, so all I can tell you is get on the wait list and pay attention. Um, and when it does get released, you'll be the first to be notified. So hope that helps. <laughs> all right. Any last minute questions here? Okay. Anonymous Anonymous says, I signed up for Freight Burger, uh, boot Bootcamp and Sales, et cetera, but it doesn't include a live training with you. All right. So that means you signed up for the self-paced Freight Broker Sales Accelerator. So I also have another product. Some people couldn't afford the live coaching program. So I have another product that's called my Freight Broker Sales Accelerator, but it's a self-paced online course. It's much less expensive. You can go at your own pace. It doesn't require you to join Zoom calls and coaching calls. And that that is something that you, that's what you probably enrolled in. Um, and it's, it's much less expensive. And again, that we offer both of those but I only offer the live program, usually the enrollment. I only usually offer that live program every three, four, five months. Um, if someone wanted to be get into the self-paced online course version, that's something that does open up a little bit more often. And I do make a special offer to new members, new Freightburger Bootcamp members, where they can get enrolled in that at a discounted price upon uh, enrollment in the bootcamp. So that's probably what happened. Uh, and if you want to enroll in the live version, send a message to support at freightbreakerbootcamp.com and we'll get you enrolled in that live version the next time. You just have to pay the difference between the two programs. So hope that helps. All right, guys, listen, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's training. And again, I really appreciate the feedback. Um, take what I shared with you today and think about it for your business and how you can start leveraging social media like LinkedIn and content like I shared with you to start having a dialogue with your target market. I promise you, it's just not that hard. I gave you the framework, save that post that I gave you that I had, you know, go on my profile, find that post um, and then save it. And then you can refer back to it, right? And that can kind of be your cheat sheet, right? And then you can create your own post and start generating your own inbound leads. Um, I hope this is helpful. I hope you guys benefit from it. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker and you're just getting started, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Again, trained over 10,000 students and we offer a 60 day unconditional money back guarantee. Um, and if you want to get on the freight broker sales accelerator wait list, I've already shared that with you, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash wait list. Have an awesome week. Uh, the next time you see me, I'll be in Greece and I'll probably be streaming from a beach or from a pool or from wherever. Uh, but Wish me luck in my travels. I hope you guys have an awesome day, an awesome week, and I'll see you next week from Greece. Thanks all.